experience trash cinema. Everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of the Trash Tape. The one man's trash is another man's treasure. I am your host, Johan Schiphol. It's been a while, I know, <laughs> but we're all, we're, well, I'm back here now, and usually I am now joined this time by my victim and DJ, Edward Harvey. Hello! It's, I'm glad to be back on the show. This is like, it's been a while, like you say, Yeah, but it's... it's it's, I'm just excited about the new season, and I'm yeah. excited about Ninja November. It is, yeah. Yeah, because you know, cause the last time we did Ninja November, we generally thought it was going to be a thing every year. Then sometimes we'd go like, now nah, we can't be asked, but we have to go back. Because I kind of wanted to come back with Ninjas. Because I did promise you, I remember after, I did promise you when we first started this many years ago, is that we're going to watch a whole bunch of movies with Ninjas in it. I promised you so much more ninjas, and I feel like I disappointed you with the lack of ninja I gave you. Um, the interesting thing about Ninja November is we, it's like I totally thought that we invented it, but then I've noticed <laughs> this it's an actual genuine hashtag on like Instagram. And uh, as soon as I started posting that I'd, I'd be, we're going to be doing Ninja November stuff, loads of like grindhouse type pages and things like that just responded with like, you know, a lot of praise for like it's doing like, oh Ninja November. Like, oh my God, we're totally doing this. Oh my God, that, that's, that's actually quite scary. Are we started a trend? <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's not, it, I don't, I think it was like started long before we even uh, attempted it. But it's probably the kind of hashtag everyone thinks that they've done it themselves because it's totally mm. niche. <laughs> It's, it's totally niche. Yeah, basically just more excuses for ninjas. But yeah, I did. Like I said, we've only done we did we've o- we've only done Miami Connection with you and me in terms of with actual ninjas in it. And the only other ninja movie did I didn't do it with you. I did it with Greg, which was the Dead or Alive movie, which has ninjas in it. So, yes. So it's not enough ninja. So we're going back to do some ninjas. And what? And this is the thing you suggested this one because you found a clip. And you laughing way too hard at it. And I said, are you sure we want to do this one? And fudge it, we decided to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going into the weird and wonderful world of Godfrey Ho, where we talk about Ninja Terminator. Ninja Terminator. Witness a bloody struggle over the search for the unlimited boss of the golden ninja warrior. Ninja Terminator, an outstanding action-packed adventure between a triangle of the deadliest ninja warriors. You want the golden ninja warrior all for yourself? Look at this. Yes, that's my ninja star. (laughs) Right? It's my ninja star. This is yours. Ninja Terminator, a spectacular story of betrayal and lust, the supreme power of ninja technique. (laughs) Ninja Terminator, the weapon, the combat, and the intrigue enter the heart-stopping world of the Ninja Empire. Ninja Terminator. Classical ninja fighters versus a world of guns, explosives, and even high technology. Ninja Terminator. Don't miss it. Coming through to the screen. 
Oh, I love Ninja Terminator already. Ah, okay. The thing, the thing is, when I first heard like of this movie and heard of the title, yeah. like anyone, you would naturally assume it's going to be about a ninja that's also a Terminator, but yeah. it's it's not about... It's, it's just a clever title, just like to make you think of ter- ninjas and Terminators, but it's not <laughs> at all. Do you know what the funny thing is? They never mention Ninja Terminator until very late in the movie, where later on they just say, I am here, I am the nin- I am a Ninja Terminator. And it's like, this was never mentioned any other place in the movie. I know, I can play that. Go for it. Our Ninja Empire is supreme, omnipotent, and righteous. Our blood is motivated by Ninja Spirit. <laughs> when we take up a mission, we must succeed or die. <laughs> So nuts. Our techniques are dominant and unbeatable. Our style is unique and hypnotically elegant. <laughs> if you don't want to suffer under the rocks of the ninjas, then give back our golden ninja warrior. Amazing. And I'm a ninja terminator. <laughs> I'm like, just like, oh, by the way, I am the ninja terminator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They name drop it, even though the ninja. Oh, it's, it's bizarre, and this is the reason why I love this thing. Now, I was skeptical doing this first of all for the fact that this was a Godfrey Ho movie. Okay, the yeah. last Godfrey Ho movie we I watched was a Cobra against Ninja, which yes. was absolutely appalling. But I think I know why with that one because that was one is that's later in his canon as it were so i'm assuming they kind of i i bet that he just kind of ran out and was he had very little richard harrison uh footage left so they just showed me 85 percent of another movie i don't care about <laughs> uh, so i'm like oh shit but and the, the funny thing about that one is i don't know if you mentioned it on the show before but like yeah. i i sort of saw a clip of it yeah and said yeah let's do a video about this so you watch the entire movie and i only watched those little clips so you, you suffered did. to watch the entire film and i didn't even watch it <laughs> but that's because i said like look, i watched this and then, and then and then we made a video out of it which is online and the video yeah. It's brilliant because it's, look, I sat down and watched this entire piece of garbage, and I'll tell you right now, the only bit you're interested in is only 15 minutes. <laughs> so let's just look at these 15 minutes. <laughs> just I'm only interested in, in the uh, the Hulkamaniac ninja. <laughs> oh my god, that was hilarious. But yeah, it's that. But okay, it, l- 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 let's step back a little bit and put a little bit of context into what yes. this is. So. Ninja Terminator. So Ninja Terminator is a 1985 American, uh, sort of an American Hong Kong movie, as it were, directed by God, directed, edited, and written by Godfrey Ho. However, there is a weird little thing you have to think about it. He is what's considered the master of a very particular style of filmmaking, which is literally the cut and paste. Yes. Um, where. It, it's fascinating. He owns, basically, him and Joseph Lai, who is producer, right, owned a place, uh, basically own a company called, I, uh, run, run companies by IFD and Filmmark and sort of work with them a lot. And he, they basically owned rights to a whole bunch of foreign kung fu films, right? They owned yeah. a lot from, like, from Taiwan, from Korea, from the Philippines, from even things in Hong Kong, right? The only international rights. So what he decided to do is, well, we can't just launch them out like this. It's not going to be as interesting, especially if half the movies are not technically from the genre you think they're supposed to be in. So he says, well, fudge it. How can we sell this movie overseas? Well, <laughs> you get Richard Harrison to come in, first of all, <laughs> and shoot a whole bunch of original footage most of it completely out of context and then splice it into the movie with some very clever dubbing to make it seem like it's all part of a coherent plot and then launch it into international markets. Yeah, so this is like super low budget stuff. It's like you shoot enough footage for one movie and turn it into like 20 movies. <laughs> Arguably, Pretty much. yeah. He's, he's like the Hong Kong's, like, he's like a Ed Wood of Hong Kong, isn't he? Basically. <laughs> he's actually been labelled as that as well, <laughs> yeah. so there he is. Um, what's interesting is, is that it, what it feels like, all the original footage, especially in something like Ninja Terminator and Cobra Against Ninja, like I showed you, if you cut only those scenes together, there's no movie, right? But there is about a short film of about 20 minutes, but it's just yeah. random shit with ninjas that don't really that has a plot, 
but doesn't make a lot of sense on its own. So it feels like this is sort of a quick grab way of doing it. I'm not saying Godfrey Ho is a genius or a con artist, but he is, oh, he is a genius and a con artist for doing, I don't know how many movies in his discography. Most of them, about 50 of them have Ninja in the title. <laughs> do you do, do you know if about like, uh, were his movies successful at the time? I know they've gained cult status with bad movie mm. fandom now. Yeah. But were they popular at the time? In the well, 80s and 70s. Like. Well, here's the thing, though, right? Uh, the first the first one that got very popular was Ninja Terminator. This was right. the first one that got him into, the, into, into, like, that, right? A lot of the time, these did not get launched in cinemas. They got launched right into, the, uh, right into VHS and go a whole bunch of stuff like that. Mm. And one of the things is they usually sell it on, like, the really interesting box art and stuff like that. So it's a little bit, like how mockbusters are now do you know when you look at something like the asylum and you go like say oh it's not it's not the t- it's not transformers it's transmorphers and it has a really interesting looking cover yeah it's that basically <laughs> um they were that this one was the most popular one to the point and i quote looking down at sort of its reception this move this was labeled at one point in um in paste magazine as being as being number 100 in the 100 best martial arts movies of all time. <laughs> so it, it's in the 100 list, just barely reaching God, the it's surface. Just, it's in the list, though. It's My God. Li- it's in the list. It's just at 100. <laughs> like, it scrapes the barrel just to get there. The Ninja Terminator actually uses 50% of another movie. Do you, do you have any idea what that 50% movie is? I don't know. Okay. No, my knowledge of martial art films isn't like, well, it isn't like that extensive. So I haven't a clue. So this is actually, this is the thing. And you know what the sad thing is? It's like you're only able to find this movie in its entirety now, only in Korea. Because it's a Korean movie called The Uninvited Guest of the Star Fairy from 1984. What a title. Um, But I can imagine how they said, hmm. The uninvited guest of the Star Fairy. That's not exciting. Change that to Ninja Terminator and let's add Richard Harrison in it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it, it's done this with a lot of movies. And he's been, this was basically his trick throughout the 80s, basically. Yeah. He, fa- he, he found a cheap way of doing it. This doesn't mean, though, that he never directed actual movies, okay? He has directed actual films without the cut and paste situation uh because he used to work as an assistant in he used to work as an assistant director in the shaw brothers studio all right cool so he actually knows stuff he worked alongside john woo in the 70s so he knows how to actually do this yeah i think the only reason why he's done it like officially with the whole let's do this thing is i think he was trying to find a way to make a very very quick buck as quickly as possible to fund maybe future movies i guess well, I can imagine it being profitable, but it's totally shameless, isn't it? It's kind of like, mm. well, I, d- I don't care if it's like crap or not. I'm just going to make money. <laughs> this is very much a money thing. However, <laughs> he does eventually tr- attempt to do movies later on, uh, later on, which are actually like proper. Like, for example, and we're going to do this later on in a podcast in future. He did do two movies with Cynthia Rothrock. <laughs> Yeah, I'd heard about that. Yeah, I've not seen them, though. Well, he did, he did Honor and Glory and the one we're going to review at some point, Undefeatable, which is absolutely amazing. Um, Are they uh, well-received, those movies? Undefeatable, yeah. I absolutely yeah. love Undefeatable. Well, I, I, every, anyone who's like a secret fan of Cynthia Rothrock... You know, is um, you, 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 this is this is this is creme de la creme, Cynthia Rothrock. Um, right. But it's the thing, though. Uh, just looking a little bit more about the man before we talk into the movie and look going a little bit more into Richard Harrison for a minute. Um, this is the thing. Um, he's he was he's been making movies like this now. Now, in the, from the nineties onwards, he's making like trying to make legit movies because I think he's realizing mm. that people are not going to fall for this anymore. Mm. <laughs> so he's got to try to make official movies. He's trying to make bigger like bigger action films bigger things aimed originally at a caucasian market he wasn't really interested in the hong kong market he wanted to make it big internationally while a lot of people in hong kong were trying to just make movies for hong kong yeah uh -uh. he said like nah we're gonna try and make it purposely big by hiring caucasian actors making it based in america or england or australia (laughs) wherever's predominantly white and try and sell it that way 
You can definitely get a sense of that. He's trying to Americanize the ninja movie. <laughs> yeah, American. I wouldn't even. The thing is, he's trying to Americanize the ninja movie. I don't even think he's. I think he's the reason why people think ninja movies are rubbish, basically. Because the aesthetic of the ninja movie is partly from him now, if you think about it. Well, the thing is, when I go and like think, oh, I'm in the mood for a ninja movie. I only want to watch the bad ninja movies. I don't, mm. I've got no interest in watching a good ninja movie. Yeah. And it's because when I was a kid, mm. a lot of the nin- cheap ninja action figures that I had yeah. looked like the ninjas in Godfrey Ho movies. So that's that's what I... is the, the nostalgia of ninjas is that aesthetic, like you say, and it's been established now. And I'm only interested in seeing those type of movies, yeah, <laughs> ninja-wise. Because it is true, when we talk about it in a minute, it's like, it's like, play, it's like playing with your ninja toys with bright colours and look something out of G.I. Joe, and you're just bashing them together. So, yeah, it's uh, you're going to have to... Does this, does this mean that Godfrey Ho is more influential than we realise? <laughs> You talk about Richard Harrison. <laughs> I love him. I mean, like every, I mean, in all these movies, his bits are the best bits. A thousand percent. Yeah, uh, he's, he's he's the best thing in the movie. He's, he's, he is probably one of the best things in the movie, and he is he's he's very interesting. However, there's a tragic backstory to the reason why he's doing these movies, <laughs> um, and you can you can probably suss it basically. Um, well, I, I know that they are considered the low point of his career and also the fact that he didn't realise that they were going to be made into loads of movies. He was, like, just filming what he thought was, like, one movie. Yeah. And he was just then put into loads of movies, that, like, you know, without his consent, basically. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, basically, <laughs> he thought he was going to go over because at, during the time, like, in the, in the 60s and 70s, he, Richard Harrison, is fascinating here. He was basically doing a lot of European B movies, right? Uh, you know, he tried in America, he tried in America, but he just wasn't getting like consistent work. So he decided to, um, so he decided to say, okay, I'm going over to Europe and film a whole bunch of B movies because at least I'm going to get consistently paid, right? Yeah. So and his and his oh, and his son, interesting factor according to according to the man himself. Uh, he stated as a quote that he was doing the European thing, but however, he was asked originally to do Clint Eastwood's role in A Fistful of Dollars. He turned it down and then recommended Clint Eastwood to do it. Oh, no. That's such a shame. What you a could have tr- been like Clint Eastwood now, like in terms of the movies that Clint Eastwood's done. I know! <laughs> So basically, Richard Harrison could have been Clint Eastwood, but no, he went and did schlocky movies in uh, schlocky movies in Europe, and then met Godfrey Ho, which he claims ruined his career, and so he basically retired from acting in the nineties because of that. I hope he's not still like ashamed of it because a lot of there's a lot of fandom now for these movies, and though he, mm. he's, he's probably still hurt by it, but I hope I hope that he can see that he's got that popularity there. Because he is the best thing about those movies, and people recognise that, you know. A thousand percent. It does feel, honestly, that I think now he's appreciating the fact that that's the thing. But, you know, at the time, let's say literally at the time, it's 1985, 1986, and you look at Ninja Terminator, and you see this bit of your, your clip in it, and you're sitting there going, and this is the first time you've seen footage from that movie, you too would think it's the worst thing ever, and you would think you'd be really sort of bad. But as we've discussed about cult movies it takes a while to fester a cult following sure and now yeah. they uh and now I, I do feel like he does appreciate it now i mean the man is uh incredibly in the man is 85 right now so he's just yeah. living retired life in california enjoying himself but um i do think he would look back at it and say like you know at least he's now being recognized Again, I guess. I mean, if he if he was in one more movie, I would cast him as like a ninja master. <laughs> yes, he, he, he's, he's, he's 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 like the ultimate sifu. He is he is the master in there. He doesn't do anything. He just cross legs. So once in a while, he'll just do like a whip, throw a throw, throw a smoke bomb. <laughs> yeah. like, like there we go. Oh my god, he is the ninja master. So, but yeah. still in a colorful ninja gi. Like it needs to be. It, and he needs a headband. It says ninja on it. 
<laughs> just in case just you didn't give him know. a long beard, and that, that's the only new addition. Yeah. Oh my god. Poor thing on the man, because like like you mentioned, he was only he was only originally hired to just be filming free movies at once, because that's what a lot of B movie actors do when they go over to Europe or a country. They stay there and say, right, I'll work with this director and film free movies, right? Enough footage for free films, which means you, he gets a big paycheck right off the bat, right? Yeah. Even if it doesn't do well, he gets paid. Then that turned out to be 20 movies, which you were right on. It, it, and it was clipped over multiple times. Sometimes the same clips from s- s- a clip from one movie is then played again in another movie, just rehashing this footage over and over again. And this, this, ke- this came on from 1985 to about 1990. So this is five years of using the same footage over and over again. Yeah, and they often, uh, in Germany, a lot of, like, um, montage shots were repeated in the same movie, weren't they? So I'll just, I'll just repeat that shot again, like, later. I've already seen that shot. It's just, like, filling time. Well, well, the best one for me in that bit, by the way, when we look at the montages and talk about the ninja training, I burst into laughter when Richard Harrison is cutting watermelons. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he does it twice! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's so, amazing. It's so good because you think like, oh, oh, the first time you think, oh, that's impressive, and then the second time going, nah, I've already seen the trick, mate. This is not impressive anymore. Why are you cutting watermelons? I oh. mean, it's not training. It's just showing off, basically. <laughs> that is showing off. <laughs> So, okay, so we've talked a bit about the man. We've talked a little bit about the myth of the legend as Godfrey Ho. So I'm just going to go very quickly and just do the briefest synopsis of of this movie according to according to IMDb, which isn't much. Um, no. So according according to IMDb, the plot is basically this. Okay, it's be- the movie's divided into two movies technically, but only on, on IMDb it only says this. Free martial arts students search for the Golden Ninja Warrior, a statue reputed to have magical powers. End. <laughs> That's the okay. plot. But there is so much more in this movie that uh, we're not going to get through because it is bizarre. But also, I want to have, um, to all our listeners out there, we have decided to do a li- something a little bit different with the structure. We've decided that we're not going to go through the entire plot of the movie. Number one, because as a whole, it's exhausting. It takes a long time for myself to edit. And also, it ex- it kind of mentally exhausts myself and Ed when we talk about all the bits. So everything's going to be put into a bit more structures now. Things that we like, talk about certain subjects and spits, etc. But um, just, just, ma- just to give it a bit more of a flow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got I've got a, a list of like um lines from the movie mm-hmm. and and just sort of little bits of music and things like that and little little bits sound bites for scenes that we can talk about and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 sometimes we we really want to talk about certain bits, but we have to talk about the plot that leads up to that bit. So, some, let's just get to it. If you want to talk about that particular thing, just get to it. Maybe provide a little bit of context, but <laughs> But although we didn't determine it, I don't think context is going to help. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, like uh, just talking briefly about it, that the, that plot, the synopsis I gave you there, that is all the Richard Harrison stuff. There is a whole other subplot involving the Korean movie where it stars Jaguar Wong and who happens to be his goon, who I never, ne- who they never meet in the same room, and they that is a full blown. That seems like a full blown like gangster espionage kind of kung fu flick, like with with genuine plot. Um, yeah, trying to mash it together with this one little weird thing here. But he, yeah, in this movie, he's basically just like an ally of Richard of of Harry. Yeah, uh, and uh, Harry, the yeah. only he so he's basically just doing his work for him, isn't he? And like the, the only way they link it, and I think Godfrey does this a lot, mm. is by a, a phone call. So yes. if you've got a shot of them on the phone, you can any other shot of the original old footage where they're on the phone, you mm-hmm. can make it look like they're communicating and link the two together. So he's basically just <laughs> Harry is just telling Jaguar to kind of like do this. do this, do that, do this, do that, and like doing his work for him. It should be Richard Harrison doing that stuff. <laughs> yeah, because because Richard Harrison's half the time he's literally just in a tracksuit sitting around his house. <laughs> And like, oh my god, have you seen this videotape of this woman getting horribly tortured? You do something about it, Jaguar. It's like, for God's sake, get up your ass. 
we do meet like the at the beginning of the movie we get like uh an instruction of like the ninja empire don't we like the yes. evil evil guy mm. so that's uh, i'll just play that because that sets up who these guys are go for it master everything is prepared for you <laughs> Greetings to our master. Oh, master. My God, <laughs> the last is amazing. Today is the 20th anniversary of our ninja empire. As our top fighters, you're here to witness the empire's supreme power. So you got this evil, like guy who looks like he's in like a uh, a children's red devil like outfit. Yeah, because he hasn't got the the uh, face covering. He's just got a circular kind of. He's got a hood up. He's got yes, the red hood up and he's got like circular like face cover and he's got like the beard so he's kind of like he just looks like a cheap kind of funny red devil yes and he's the supreme like ninja master guy and he's showing these other ninja guys uh the the, the power isn't he basically how powerful if you've got this golden statue yes uh you have the power and mm. he, he he basically uh shows off this power by he gets them to like uh like it's hit it, like slashing with a sword against his like arm, yeah. And it, it it basically doesn't cut his arm. Like he's showing how that's that's basically the display of power. It basically makes him like un literally uncuttable. So it's like <laughs> nothing can handle me. Swords getting bashed and clicked all over the place. But then what's funny is what this is what happens right after the ceremony happens where he shows off the stuff and obviously Richard Harrison and his amazing mustache, um, looking at it looking very perplexed. He then um. He just basically, as he like goes off somewhere, he just, they just, they just take it. They just take it and just run off with it. Go like, ha ha, master, no, we're going to have it now. So who's the good guy here? I don't know. I know. Uh, I mean, I've got a clip of that, actually. Go for it. Master, the golden ninja warrior is gone. What's that? <laughs> Who did it? Harry, Baron, and Tomashi. They killed all the guards and they got away. <laughs> Spread the news. Get the golden ninja warrior back. As for the traitors... Make sure they're killed. <laughs> but I know what you mean. It's like when I was watching it, I'm struggling to see like who to who, who to root for. Because yeah. the only reason uh, the bad guys are the bad guys is because people like Harry say the Ninja Empire is evil, so we have to reform it with good ninjas. <laughs> That's it. just I'm just taking his word for it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Everything is literally compiled out of context, and you have to figure it out, and it's a bit bizarre. But this is this is leading on to the first thing I want to talk about as a whole, okay? Yeah. Because we've shown some clips, I think it's only fair to discuss that we need to talk about the dubbing. Like, we really, really need to talk about the dubbing. Um, it's unique, <laughs> to say the least. Well, any anything, anything is funny. That's the thing. Even like I've got a clip of a simple line. I'll play it in a bit. Yeah. But it's just a simple line that's like I burst out laughing just because it, it, if it was if that line was just kind of said normally when it wasn't dubbed, it wouldn't be funny. Yeah. But it's just that anything can be funny in this movie, which is great. It's also the fact that whoever they got, the several people who they got to do the voiceovers and the dubbing over, like clearly, just to make that clear, that is not, that clearly doesn't sound like Richard Harrison doing any of his own dubbing. It just sounds someone else has gone in as well, which is a real shame because you might as well just record his own dialogue while there. But it is a process that a lot of cheap movies will not uh record sound on set during the time because it means that they can shoot things faster because they don't have to worry about audio issues they could just shoot the scene and then uh, with bad audio and then dub it later whenever but it does yeah. mean then like someone like richard harrison doesn't even have to doesn't really lend his own voice to the movie no but you can see that when they do uh, all of his lines are dubbed and it is the actual dialogue Yes. Because you can see that it's actually what he said when he was there. But obviously some of the, the stuff like the, 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 the Korean stuff that's put in there is mm. completely like the dialogue is completely replaced. It's oh, not it's the same nonsense. stuff. <laughs> it's <No>. nonsense. <laughs> it's the only way that Godfrey Ho was able to try and make a plot out of it by yeah. dubbing all of this with, with his own nonsense and showing, it, oh, by the way, we're all doing this for the Ninja Empire when really 
though everything involving the Koreans, there's barely any ninjas in it. So it has nothing to do with the ninja empire. So they tr- so they try and hack it out a bit by saying like there's a fight scene where some people are wearing like balaclavas or a sock on their head or something or wearing a or wearing a like a bandana over their mouth, but that's it. That's not it. That's a thug. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of like hilarious stuff. Like, I I love the way when it attempts to do drama. Yeah. Do you remember the the uh, graveyard? <laughs> oh yes, and this is the best example I'm talking about by really badly weird dubbing. <laughs> Listen to this. Because uh, I don't know what I don't know what we're gonna do without Tamashi. It 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 just doesn't seem fair. Why did God do this to us? My God. Hey. Machiko, my sister, don't worry. He's back. We'll always remember Tomashi as the wonderful person and brother that he was to us. My God. May God rest his soul. But Machiko, I'm bothered. Bothered by his death. I'm bothered by his death. It seems so strange. (laughs) This whole thing is damn suspicious. Machiko. Do you think our brother was hiding something? <laughs> something illegal that we didn't know about? Oh my god, this is this exposition like dump. drugs or smuggling or maybe even triad activity. Maybe. Why maybe. would anyone want to get rid of Kumashi? Why? And then get evidence to show that he was murdered. It just doesn't make any sense at all, does it? None of this makes sense. <laughs> the police say that he was found with pieces of metal in his back. It's cool. It definitely means somebody wanted him dead. It's so strange. It's so strange. It's so strange. Come, Machiko. Oh I'm sorry. God. I didn't mean to upset you. Because you keep... But I have to find out what about, about, Talking about the murder all, well, all the time. It's like metal God. in his back. It's For oh the my sake God. of our family. So much murder. You understand? <laughs> That the last bit, you understand. It's actually trying to put a bit of emotion in it at that point. Just that one little bit. Oh, but that's the thing is like a lot of the, what you're talking about it, the dubbing. There's three, there's a few things weird about it. Number one, <laughs> the choices of accents is astronomical and it just makes everything funny, right? Yeah. Um, that's one. Two, because they, because obviously Godfrey Ho is trying to like fill in a plot that doesn't exist. A lot of the nonsense is filled in there just to try and literally glue the new footage and the old footage together, which is hilarious. Oh, my goodness. And then obviously just, just, I mean, the performances, there's no, there's, there's barely any emotion in it other than just the same thing for most of it. No, I mean, the, the, the scenes that were like just the filler scenes are often were the ones that made me laugh the most. Like, for some reason, I don't know if this made you laugh or not, but, you know, do you remember when Rich, uh, Harry is just kind of, his wife is just preparing dinner? Remember that scene? <laughs> yes! Right, I've got a <laughs> Yes, please! What are we eating tonight, darling? <laughs> it's your favourite dish. Steamed crab. No, Steamed this time crabs. I'm preparing a really special dish, something called drunken crab, and I know you're going to love it. It's amazing. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Hang on in there. You'll find out. <laughs> For some reason, I just burst out laughing when he went, steamed crabs. <laughs> it's, 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 it's almost like that. It's not a sentence that no one should ever say, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, my favorite, steamed crabs. <laughs> and basically, it's just that that scene, it's an attempt to put comedy in there because she starts screaming in the kitchen. Yeah. And that he's like really worried at first, but then she, she's, he sees that the, the crabs have just kind of got loose in the kitchen and they're kind of run, what, running around. And yeah. he just he throws one of his ninja knives or stars into yeah. the crap. And then that's like a, a comedy scene. And scene ends. And then we never know about the crabs ever again. Why is there smoke coming out of your oven, Seymour? Uh, oh, that isn't smoke. It's steam. Steam from the steamed crabs we're having. Mmm, steamed crabs. I don't know what about you, but I noticed as I was watching it. The dubbing loves saying the word bastard a lot. Yes. <laughs> Every character at some point, some, there's some characters doing more, but everyone's like, oh my God, look at you, you bastard. You <laughs> bastard. Look at you, you bastard. It's, I, 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 I almost kept count. <laughs> it got so often how much they use that word to fill in like gaps. I'll play it for the guys. Victor! 
We've got Machiko. Release Lily. Okay, Victor. I'll send Lily over. You send Machiko. Okay, it's a deal, you bastard. <laughs> 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 He's like, that's just one example. But he has to tag it onto the end of sen- every sentence, doesn't he? That guy, yeah. especially. Victor. So that's the guy that Jaguar Wong is up against most of the time, isn't it? Yeah, he's up against Victor. Um, mm. That scene, that scene, that scene's also very complicated because we're going to get into Sims at some point where there's loads of plot twists. But yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> So, the only other reason why anyone would watch this movie, then, is the ninja fights. Can we actually talk about the fights as a whole, actually? Because, I'm not going to lie, this movie's great for the kung fu scenes and the ninja scenes. They are actually pretty good. Like, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, they are good. Um, obviously, a lot of the best fights are the Jaguar Wong stuff, because he's actually a really good martial artist. Yeah. And a lot of the scene, those scenes are really good. But I do actually like the ninja stuff as well. Like, well, one of my favourites... Um, at fights, it, it, it's, well, it's the fight isn't that too brilliant, but I just love the introduction to it. Yes. It's when one breaks into uh, uh, one of the evil ninjas, the red ninjas, yeah. breaks into Harry's apartment. Yes! And I've got a little clip of, of the intruder aspect. So he, so he's already, the intruder is already in Harry's apartment mm. and Harry comes back and then... I'll, I'll play just the intro to that bit. Go for it. So you can hear him, Harry whistling. He's just coming through the door. He suspects the ninja's there, though. I remember every detail of this. It's brilliant. I'll just explain what that is. So basically, he's acting like he's whist- Harry's whistling, and he's acting like the ninja isn't there. It, yeah. He hasn't hasn't suspected him, but he, as soon as he comes around the corner, that big like music that comes in that's like like sounds ridiculous, like really loud, yes. is when Harry magically turn like turns into his he's got his net ninja outfit on and he's ready for battle, and he, he literally goes be- be- uh, comes out from uh, a corner. Mm. In his, he goes like like Superman changes <laughs> into his Superman outfit. He, he's in it's normal amazing. clothes, yeah. And he comes around the corner, and he's in his ninja outfit. And that music is when he come it come, kicks in when he's in his ninja outfit, ready for battle. That ninja outfit, by the way, that's it's is that is this the one where he's in, where he's in full camo. He's camo well, he's ninja. only ever in camo, isn't he? Every yeah, he's, time, <laughs> e- everything else after because at the beginning he was all in black, and then after that he's now in camo. It's hilarious that he's, he pops in in a camo <laughs> outfit. And here's the thing: that fight in there is just a calling card situation. But it's hilarious because when the fight happens, they do a couple of moves, but a lot of it's just like fire, smoke. Suddenly he just pops in, and the guy just disappears. And it's like, what happened? This took seconds. <laughs> I, I love the gadgets that they have on their like swords. Like you've yeah. just said, one of them's got a flame for on the end. One of them's got smoke, and sometimes you can put out the fire with the smoke. Weirdly, <laughs> yeah, <it's> so <laughs> bizarre. There's also a bit, and I love the bit because this is the pieces where they're just sharing shurikens to each other, sharing ninja stars as a calling card or something. And there's one bit where he takes out what looks like to be some kind of sai or something, and at one point he, the guy, throws the ninja star, but he grabs it and it just keeps spinning. <laughs> on this thing it's like look at it look how i grabbed it i am such a ninja so good um the, uh, all the other ninja fights as well this this is where you this is where you're first properly introduced to teleportation because the ninjas can teleport um which is all fantastic and the especially the fight near the end which is absolutely preposterous it's one of my favorite things <laughs> yeah it, it's it's amazing i mean i i love the montages though basically the the, mm. the, the, the preparation for battle. So like they get a challenge. Harry often gets challenges, doesn't he, by by like um a, a ninja. Yes. So he has to start, he has to get ready. So- <laughs> <laughs> no, which one are you thinking of? <laughs> There's a bit where uh, Harry and his wife uh like arrive back at the house and there's like a message on the window. Yeah. And his wife sees it first and it says, you know, challenge uh the 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 one of the other ninjas. And I'll play that because uh, then you can hear the montage music kick in. 
<laughs> Jesus. So that's the message on the window. And then this music kicks in. Love it. So good. <laughs> Oh my god. So basically, he's basically on that scene is where, I mean, it could, it, they play that music when he's chopping up the melons, but like, like yeah. you mentioned earlier, but that one in particular is when he's surrounded by candles. <laughs> That's my favorite one. And he's it's... got like candles are like on his sword. And I think he's kind of just like chopping the candle as it, as it's on the sword. So he's kind of lifting up then chopping the candle. But it's like <laughs> they, they're actually on the blade of his sword. It's impressive. Like, this is the thing. It's impressive. You know, it looks really cool. There's a bit there. There's a bit where he's got his piece of the golden ninja warrior and how he's like smacking his arm, making it feel like he can, this arm cannot be defeated. It's really, really genuinely good stuff. <laughs> Compare that with also like anything with the actual, it's kind of weird because they are two very different kind of fights. The ninjas are silly. They are full-blown silly, and it's brilliant. And you can also see when they are fully wide shot, you can kind of tell that isn't Richard Harrison doing backflips and cartwheels. <laughs> well, I imagine he wasn't a martial artist, was he? So I imagine no. a lot of the fights weren't him. It's yeah. just that the bits where he pulls down his face mask so you can see that it's Richard Harris. The only thing that disappointed me slightly is that I wish there was one thing they kept from Cobra against Ninja, which is his magical how I leave a fight situation. He did, that never <laughs> appears here. I was disappointed where it's, it's like I said, in Cobra against Ninja, it's the only bit I really liked where every time after every fight, he would lower his mask. He would do a whoosh, he'd do a backflip, and he would disappear halfway through. I'm like, that's an exit! They should do that in all the movies, shouldn't they? I know, right? Just, just to emphasise, in this universe, that's how ninjas leave. <laughs> Looking at the, ja the Jaguar Wong fights, though, just briefly, because they are genuinely very good. Um, oh, yeah. They are... Yeah. If you're wanting genuine kung fu... Watch the watch all of them. He's doing really good stuff. Loads of he, he does it with a lot of speed. But what I've noticed with Chang Guo Wang that made me laugh is he only basically's got two moves. He just does it in like really fast succession. He kicks a lot, and instead of punching, he slaps people a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like. Yeah, and what did he think about Jackie Wong? Did he? Uh, I I thought he was an arrogant cock, to be honest, and he, he pissed is. me off. Because <laughs> I know he, it was fat. He was kind of tr like uh, it was cool then to be like arrogant, if you know what I mean, as a hero. Yeah. And mm. he's kind of he's a bit like a a, a Bruce Lee type, isn't he? He wants yeah. to be. He's like he's like a cheaper Bruce Lee. Mm. And, um, but there's one fight where he's so arrogant that he's got his hands in his pockets. Yeah, I remember so that So he's bit. just doing kicks for a bit until he realises, oh, actually, I might have to use my hands for a little bit because the guy <laughs> is throwing some punches at me. But for about five minutes, he's just got his hands in his pockets and he's, like, just using his legs, just showing well, off. It is showing off, but it's also very fucking impressive. But that's the thing is, when he does take his hands out of his pockets, he doesn't punch. He goes and slaps them. And the slaps are ridiculous. Like, it, one slap makes someone almost back flip <laughs> it's like yeah. wow <laughs> i mean the sound effects help like the sound effects are pretty impressive but do you know mm. you notice that every time like obviously the punch like all the slap all the slap kind of noises i've got a mm. real like it's like a snare hit doesn't it it's kind of really like a slappy kind of hit mm. but like whenever a lot of the kicks sounded like really weird like quite hollow didn't they like full full like that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> stopped very odd <laughs> Yeah, the Foley, the Foley and those fight scenes are very generic, sort of like the ones you'd expect from most of those kind of movies. I clearly suspect that uh, that he that uh, Godfrey Ho had a sound library they probably got from the Shaw Brothers from working from the Shaw Brothers. Yeah, got some of them and then plopped them in there, um, which is why it might not sound entirely like it should be. But my God, is it funny to watch?
Marty, can we very briefly talk about the ending of that of the ninja fight, which is the most preposterously bizarre thing? <laughs> the last ninja fight, where they finally get all three ninjas are all fighting together to f- take over the uh, to beat the uh, the bad ninja. Um, yeah. The- <laughs> Okay, I love the fight because I genuinely like what they were doing with it. That This one actually had a little bit of psychology because the bad ninja who killed it from Tamashi, who is like a one-off side character and is the only link as to why the Korean movie exists, by the yeah. way. Um, the bad ninja stole the body, right? The body of the ninja, while the other two guys stole the arms of the ninja, right? So that means that whenever anyone took a when anyone tried to punch the guy in the belly or in the gut it did absolutely nothing and yeah. said, oh no it's doing fudge all like it's doing nothing and while the other guys their arms are the thing that are fine right like you can hit them in the arms but nothing else oh right so they're only armored in the arms then so yeah could, yeah all right okay cool so the best bit is the body then the best piece you need is a body yeah, and it's like, say, but I need the arms to finally fulfill myself. And he does that, and it's really, really genuinely a good fight. But then it gets really weird suddenly, where once all the pieces are put together, and then he prays, somehow there's an explosion <laughs> at the end, and then it just cuts. I know, I've actually got a clip of that. Well, let's Please. play this. All right, kill me. Your death will serve no purpose. I've lost faith. I can never return to the Ninja Empire. So, reforming the statue. Yeah. Very dramatic here. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) What is this? It's amazing! It's like a disco! (laughs) Basically, I I have to get that clip because it sounds like... Like a game show, you know, when you win a prize, <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly down. that music kicks in when the, the golden warrior is formed back together again, and that, that's what that music hits at that point, <laughs> and it's perfect. And then, literally, the last, quite literally, ten seconds, as uh, as Richard as as Richard Harrison is holding the statue and getting things sorted, and he's walking away into the sunset. There's just a fucking explosion. Right at the back. And he looks confused as to why there's an explosion. He's like, huh? And then it cuts. <laughs> like we yeah, it's not explained, it but let's let's face it, a lot of this stuff isn't explained in this movie. You don't there's need to. a lot to. of unexplained things, like the Garfield phone of Richard Hunt. Yes! Which we're going to get to in a minute, because let, um, let's move on, basically, to something else I want to talk about. This movie has so many odd choices and things, right? Things that... In an overall context, you're sitting there going, uh, quoi? And like, you don't know what it is. So, for example, why does Ninja Master Harry, who is supposed to be a Ninja Master, who is supposed to be, who seems to be in quite good wealth to some point, right? Why does he have a Garfield phone, of all the things? <laughs> I, I literally just think that that's a weird, uh, like, it's like a prop that, Godfrey Ho just kind of found. They thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. I'll just put it in the movie because it's quirky and fun. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work. I don't, I'm not going to explain it. Do you think Do you think that all the weird stuff actually is Godfrey Ho's, like, own shit? <laughs> do you think it I, just I think it's him? just like, the thing where, oh, this is what American people have. American, American people like, like Garfield. Garfield. <laughs> Americans like Garfield. <laughs> uh, you Western man, you white man, you like Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny though it is a great little phone because when you pull it out it's like it's, his eyes are closed when he got a link but his eyes open every time you get it off the hook it's so good well, uh, i've got i've got a clip right that yeah that will have uh two odd choices in it because it's it, it's it's got a phone call so you can picture the garfield phone yes but also it has the bit about where the robot arrives and oh gives him God. a message so let's just listen to this That's the doorbell, by the way. That's a terrifying doorbell. The smoke comes out the door, and here's a little toy robot. 
And I'm talking a toy robot. It's not like a full-size robot. It is a tiny kid's toy. With menacing music, by the way. Rachel. Bloody hell. There's a Garfield phone. Listen to me. Trader, I believe that you've received a death message from our ninja empire. <laughs> How did he know? The ninja is supreme and you have double-crossed it. Why did you do that? The ninja empire is evil. I have to reform the ninja empire. <laughs> that is why I took away the golden ninja warrior. You've got three days in which to return the golden ninja warrior or else you die. Oh my god. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's his answer. Go That's Harry's hell. answer. Go to hell. <laughs> oh, but brilliant. I, I look, what I love about that is that you can picture those two odd choices all in one there. You can picture the Garfield yeah. phone, you can picture the toy robot. And I love the way they get, he gets the phone call immediately and he, he knows <laughs> that he's, the message has been delivered. This is like, Ninjas know. this is before the days of having like sort of GPS and things like that and like internet and things like that. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna run with that just ninja intuition. Like yeah. ninjas just know when shit happens, right? But it's the thing that get, like the robot appears several times as the messenger. Like at one point, they the the robot drops off a VHS of the thing, and th- this bit's funny. It goes uh, there's a VHS tape that's dropped over to um to Harry's house at point uh, later on, which is just literally um it's supposed to be like makito's uh makita who's like the sister of the other thing from the korean movie being tortured right it's yeah like, oh no and it's kind of funny because the wife's there as well looking confused like oh honey why are we watching this snuff movie but they um, watch a lot of it don't they before yeah before they come <laughs> to the conclusion that this is serious but this, like, funny this thing is, is riveting darling let's keep watching <laughs> it's so bad but on top of that it's just clearly them watching the actual movie because it's not even like it cuts to the movie no it's them watching the movie from the tv okay so it's so this is why because i'm thinking like hey this is supposed to be like um like you know like a like a shoddy torture film they made there's so many camera angles in that torture movie everything from close-ups and everything he's like oh i'm just imagining if that was a case where the like you know victor and all the bad guys saying look we want to make this torture movie feel very authentic okay can we stop it stop it right there well i need a close-up of you whacking her with a cane please yeah they've got a proper television studio haven't they it's full blown it's great (laughs) Ah, oh, but yeah, the, ro- the the robot the robot is just fantastic with that bit, and there's loads of these kind of weird choices, and some of them, admittedly, are from the Korean movie. Like there is a character we haven't talked about yet. His name is Tiger, and I love Tiger. But the simple fact that Tiger is this one is for some reason he's wearing a blonde wig the entire movie. Well, not the entire movie. This no. is the, this is the thing. It is, what's interesting about it is that I thought that was just. It meant to be his hair, right, in the movie. Yeah. But it's mm. not, he, he, he chooses to wear the wig, doesn't he? Because there is a scene where he does take the wig off to fight. It's like, no, I'm going to take my wig off to fight now. <laughs> it's so bizarre because you can clearly see, to me anyway, you can clearly see, like, that's a wig, mate. So why, why, why make this choice? Because it just doesn't suit the rest of his face. It is a big, like, bob wig, by the way. It's like, it's almost like a 50s ladies' blonde bob wig. It's a bit like He Man's hair. Remember He Man? Yes! Like oh blonde, my god, it is! He's got a blonde fringe. He's all blonde. He's got a fringe, and it kind of just like bobs around, like you say. Oh my my favourite my favorite scene with him is this is another it fits in with the odd choices kind of category yeah. is when he um meets with the professor. Yes, the professor who we only see once in the movie. And just for context, I have number one, the professor is a brilliant character. It only appears once and I'm disappointed we never see him again. But also, so the professor, the professor is invited by Tiger to talk to, to build a time bomb. And this entire, the entire, the entire exchange is fucking hilarious. Let's listen to this. Good to see you, Professor Sung. Well, let's get to the We've been waiting impatiently for your visit here. Well, I can certainly assure you, you won't be disappointed. I've just invented something superb. (laughs) 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 
Mr. Chen, you mentioned a change in plan, didn't you? This is true. <laughs> the original plan we had in mind for a type God. of bomb changed, which is why we requested you to uh, redesign it as a time bomb instead. Uh, <laughs> you can redesign as a time bomb, why not? I'm sure that you'll be satisfied with what I have constructed. Good. Good. <laughs> 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 it's so weird. A fine piece of work. Thank you. This bomb is as easily as powerful as the others, and with remote control. But will it blow my enemies up? Well, I'd say <laughs> sky high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not a crack of joke. <laughs> it's just what I need. Thank you, Professor Silk. <laughs> that scene is absolutely amazing. It's what you think of like a comedy villain. Like the professor is like a comedy villain, isn't he? That builds bad things. Oh, it's it's like it's it's like a parody of itself. Okay, and yeah. this is the reason why we can't entirely just blame uh, Godfrey Ho for this because this was a movie done by someone else entirely. And so I bet you. So this this was the other director's choice basically yes. but it is the dubbing and the dubbing is responsible by godfrey ho uh, to make this even more preposterous than it already is <laughs> oh it's, so it's just the 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 inserted laughter like because obviously they have to kind of they notice that the, the actors are like sort of smiling or sl- sl- laughing slightly so they have to insert this kind of like cut and paste laugh don't they it sounds the same pretty much every time and it's in between a lot of lines it's great it's it's sometimes in between sentences that you think should be continued so it's like but it feels like ha 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 we are here now it's like my goodness it's like he needs it's, it's almost like a tick <laughs> Supreme Ninja. Master Supreme Ninja. Supreme Ninja. Other other weird moments in this whole movie. Again, this one's now more from the Korean side, and I'll show a few bits there. Is the sex scenes are weird? Yeah, yeah. There's like it's just kind of. I suppose with sex scenes, you just kind of. Back, especially back then, you just put them in because it's kind of like, oh, we've got a sex scene in it. I, I've it's heard that it's got a sex scene. Yeah. Like, mm. And uh, <laughs> but my favourite is like the one that seemed to have like Pink Floyd music in it. You remember that one? Yeah. That Okay, this is the one where I believe it's Victor and Lily because Victor, yeah. Victor and Lily are a couple kind of thing. But Jaguar Wong is not only trying to mack on Makito, is also trying to do a double macky thing with Lily. It gets a... Basically, Jaguar gets around, but Lily is uh, Victor's girl. And then they get to the what I consider to be the weirdest... One of the weirdest sex scenes I've ever seen with... Pink Floyd playing in the background and silhouettes. Are it's like it's like you're trying to be arty. Let's just listen to it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so most of it is in silhouette. You can see the silhouettes of them going at it, can't you? While this is playing, it's so bizarre. And they're not even they don't even look like comfortable poses either. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has. He does a pose where he's got her legs over his shoulders. They're just going lift. <laughs> um, I'm just to talk over this slightly. This this is Pig Floyd, isn't it? Like this is. I bet you it is Pig Floyd. It certainly sounds like because I was watching the game. This sounds like a bit like Pink Floyd. But I was doing a little bit of like digging around, at looking at the the uh, research. Mm. It famously has ripped off Pink Floyd. But it said on Wikipedia, so like yeah. that is probably is that bit. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's done this. He's done this a lot because he's actually uh, according, according to Wikipedia and a few other bits as well. He has ripped off a whole bunch of people. Pink Floyd. He's made Tangerine Dream is another one. A couple of goth bands. A couple of Japanese artists loads of people who have literally and also just flat out music from different movies which can i just say from the very opening of the movie by the way the very opening of the movie where just the title sequence kicks in yeah my god doesn't that sound a little bit <laughs> at the beginning it sounds a little bit like i think it looks sounds a little bit like star wars <laughs> do you mean this <laughs> It 
<laughs> now that is an ident. I know, but it is flipping impressive. The logo yeah. just comes up and that just hits you in the face like, ba ba ba, I'm a movie. Rah! But then the, <laughs> there's a the funny thing. I knew I was going to be in for a ride and I was going to enjoy it because the first few notes is fucking Star Wars. It's Ooh. Star Wars. And you're like, oh no. It's definitely oh. a sound alike of Star Wars, yeah. A thousand percent. I think that's what I'll do. I think most of these may be sound alikes, but with Pink Floyd in particular, my God, that sounded exactly like Pink Floyd in that sex scene. Yeah. Oh, it was <laughs> awkward. A lot of it just seems to be just padding or ways to sort of make it feel quirky that it already is. Yeah. Um, but one of the things in particular are plot twists. There are a lot of plot twists in this movie, which I won't go for all of them, but that's because in order to order to kind of make sense between the Korean movie and the new footage, there seems to be a plot twist every few minutes just to try and make some kind of like actively coherent sense. Yeah. Yeah, so what are your favourites then? Okay, my favourite one is this the thing where they first meet up with when the first time where Jaguar Wong, there's two of them. One is Jaguar Wong, who first time goes and meets up with Lily for the first time and they bang and they have a good time. A little rapey, but they have a good time. And- <laughs> <laughs> I've got a clip for that if you want to. If you want me Go to on, play. please. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, you damn jerk? <laughs> you don't remember me? Oh God! <laughs> so laughing. dead creepy with the laughter. Lily, it is. You never could quite fool me, could you? We were over a long time ago. <laughs> Come on, Lily. I don't believe that you really feel that way. <laughs> you remember how we felt about each other? <laughs> My feelings haven't changed, and I bet yours haven't either. Look at me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gets awkward here. So basically, at the end there, you can hear him. He, he, gra- he just grabs her and like starts like snogging her like against and then, her will, and then, and then it then leads right- to a, and then she kind of starts going, "Oh, Jaguar!" Like in her voice, you can hear it, and then it leads <laughs> to a sex scene. Oh, it's so bad. I mean, it, look, look, I get it. It was the seventies and eighties, and they and they kind of did that kind of thing with men overpowering women, and women are into it. Obviously, this would never be allowed today, but it's funny in this case because it just happened so fucking quickly, but. Uh, right after the sex scene, right after the sex scene, one of my favorite plot twists, one after the sex scene, it's like, hey, baby, uh, how was last night? And then Lily goes over and says, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's like, but why? It's because, it's like, um, because, because I'm, because, because I've got a new man in my life. His name is Victor. It's like, this was quick. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, he's, he's totally not bothered anyway, is he? He's like, he's getting nah. ready to go. He's like putting his pants on and he's kind of like, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later then. Yeah, don't worry, we'll sort it out later. But that's just, just to know, I'm after Victor. And it's just like, this was a plot revelation that just happened really fucking quickly. Um, <laughs> there's a few other plot twists as well uh, that I'm into as well. It, did you have, do you have one in particular sticks out in your mind? I like, I kind of like the bit where they, t- they try to do the exchange. But it's yes. not actually Lily. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, and that's no, yeah. the bit where you get the, a lot of the "you bastard." Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah so basically, that's the scene we saw before where he's got. So Jaguar had Lily, and then Victor had Makito, and they were about yes. to sort of swap over. And you tease that, saying, "Don't worry, we're going to put on this fancy scarf over your head and everything," like an actual tease. And then it just ends up being a dude who just kung fu's him in the face, like, "Ah, he, she was never here the whole time." And it's like, my goodness. <laughs> and to link back to the other clip we played earlier, so uh, Victor at that point has that bomb that you know the time bomb that was been mentioned earlier, doesn't it? Yes. Like in that other clip, so. He's going to like, he's basically he says, I, at any moment I can blow up. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can blow her up. <laughs> yeah. I can blow her up at any minute. Ah, uh, but yeah, there's one other plot twist I like, and it's just because it's, we, we know it's coming, but it's just the funniest reveal. Again, Jaguar Wong, he's, uh, he's driving to pick up to, to kidnap Lily because they're going to do the exchange. And he's in a taxi. And he's driving the taxi. And the guy's like, where are you going? Don't worry. I know the route. He's like, this is the wrong way. Oh, shut up, you. I know where we're going. And keeps driving. And then by the end of it, once he beats the guy up, 
he just looks over to Lily. He's like, who are you? And then she, he just reveals by taking off the sunglasses, the wig, and the mustache. And it's like the funniest thing. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's a bit like a Scooby-Doo type reveal, isn't it? Just like it is. Taking it's so funny. Because the mask Lily, off. Yeah, because Lily couldn't see a thing. We all know it was Jaguar. But Lily's sitting there going, oh, no. But also, she doesn't seem that bothered. I love how Lily doesn't seem to be bothered by anything. It's like, oh, am I getting kidnapped again? Oh, no. I'm so used to this. <laughs> I mean, it isn't really... A, I've got another bit I want to talk about. It's, it's yeah. really a plot twist, but it's like, I love it when Jaguar gets kidnapped and he's, yeah. he, he's strapped to a chair. Mm. And the, 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 his, his, uh, the guy who's got him uh, chained up Mm. He's like trying to be a polite guy, and he's like, he, he says, "Where well, Jaguar says, would you at least give me a cigarette as my last wish?" Yeah. And this is like weird polite exchange about cigarettes, which is hilarious. Tell me, can a dying man have a last wish? Huh? A cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> I love the laughter. I guess so. After all, it's unlikely. But you yeah, she like yeah. before I kill you. <laughs> a sensitive guy. I appreciate the concern you show for my health. Don't bother. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> no thanks. I really prefer my own brand. You'll find them in my bag. It you is know it's a trap. Trouble for you. You know it's a trap. Hmm. But just to show you how good-natured I am, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm sorry. My hands are tied. Do you think you could possibly light it for me and have one yourself? Thanks. My God, this is so... It's I'd hate for you to remember me as a mean son of a bitch, so go ahead. <laughs> I don't usually really smoke this breath, but I'll do it for you. There is some sexual tension going on here. <laughs> it's just so polite, isn't it? It's great. <laughs> and the funny thing is, once it gets to that end there, suddenly he lights a cigarette, and then he just, and then it becomes a full blown fight scene, right? Literally after that point, it's yes. fucking hilarious. But finally, just to sort of wrap things up before going ahead, um, we've shown a lot of this, but I just kind of want to talk about the music very quickly again, how absolutely wonderful it is. Because we've been talking after, about it throughout the whole thing, but it is mind-bogglingly wonderful that, mu- that the music here is genuinely most of it bangs. I would listen to some of this on my own because it's genuinely quite good. Yeah, but there's, there's just so many good bits. I mean, I'll just play one for example. Like, there's a bit, there's a club... The club scene, nightclub scene, mm. and there's a bit where they just they they're just dancing along to to this, and it'll sound a bit distorted because it's ripped from the movie, but it's like it's good. <laughs> it's like really good eighties pop, isn't it? Like like really good music. It's 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 a shock to me that this movie has got a genuine understanding of how to pull off a good beat i'm noticing maybe maybe this is the thing maybe ninja movies are the secret place of finding great music look at miami connection and all their baggers <laughs> yeah and the um the opening main theme to ninja warrior <laughs> reminded yeah. me so much of like an 80s sitcom i've actually got a better quality version of that Ooh, okay It's when it's like the, the the actual chorus type element hits. It reminds me so much of a sitcom. You can just imagine everyone out going into freeze frame. Hello, everyone here. <laughs> Richard Harrison. Everyone is just popping in frame. Oh my god. Wait for it. It's coming in soon. It sounds like Jenny. Dallas or something at this point. It does! It, so- it sounds really good. It's nonsense how kind of good this music is, and I feel really bad because the movie's really shit, but the music bangs! It's so good! 
It is. It's just so so special. It's like it really gets you pumped for the movie. <laughs> yeah, and this is the thing, right? I, I'm not going to lie about that. The music really helped with the fight scenes and the weirdness and everything else. And yes, I, most of them are probably rip-offs from other things. But it's just, honestly, the production value of the music was good. And it really <laughs> helped me. Through. It was a big surprise for me. I mean, it's probably just because it's stolen. <laughs> I love how he's like, look, it's not really, it's not Godfrey Holmes. The music is good because it's probably actually really good music that he just nicked. I would not be surprised, actually. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, we found this track, just slide that in there. Or just get a composer to just sort of No one will see, the the, the artist won't see these movies, it's fine. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah. So basically, that is is Ninja Terminator down to a T. It's a movie that is an absolute, an absolute mess. But it's also got so many moments of glory, and we have to thank Godfrey Ho for making such an elaborate mess. One little factoid, by the way, I've just discovered this, um, that uh, Godfrey Ho has been making movies for a while, obviously. He, his last movies were like in the year 2000 or so, right? Yeah. Is he re- 2000- he's retired now, isn't he? He's retired from, he's retired from filmmaking itself. Yeah. But in 2010, and I think he's still in there, he's now teaching in the Hong Kong Film Academy. So actually, Godfrey Ho, the man who made this movie, is teaching a bunch of filmmakers in Hong Kong how to make movies. Is that right? I'll show you how to cut and paste. This is what you do. Find something cheap and then fill it in. A-star, congratulations. It's the epitome of fixing post, isn't it? It is. It's like say, you, first of all, you really need to find the best editor in the world. You, ed- editors can fix all problems. Just get any piece of crap. Fix it in post. So good. Generally. So yeah, I just found that little tidbit before we move on. So yeah, that was Ninja Terminator, which um, we went through all our best bits. We talked about our favorite moments and we talked about some very interesting plot bits and things like that in enough detail that another reason why we did it is because if anyone genuinely has a curiosity and wants to watch these movies, you can technically watch them now without feeling entirely spoiled. At least I feel so. Yeah, a lot of them are under the Wu Tang collection. Have you noticed? Yeah, the, yeah, it's <laughs> genuinely a thing. It's, yeah. it's, I love. I, the thing is, the great thing about this one, this one we saw entirely on YouTube because, mm. like, like who's really going to find the rights for Ninja Terminator and all these movies? So yeah, just find them on, find them on there, and watch it with us next time. It's genuinely a good time. So. Let's rate this puppy, shall we? Can we bring back the Trashometer? We can indeed. Trashometer. Thank you. So let's talk about the, let's talk about this again. Thank you. For, first of all, thank you very much. If this is your first time, welcome for joining us. But um, if not, if it is your first time, we need to talk about what, how we rate our movies. We're going to still keep these rank these ranking systems because I genuinely think this is the only way to to rate bad movies which is you need to show how tolerable you are to bad movies so let's start at the very very bottom uh you basically got tame tame means it is boring it's not actually a fun watch but it's because it's dull there's nothing fun right it's not really that trashy actually sometimes it it might just be just either just a blandly made movie or just it's a goodish movie but it's just not got any bad trashy movie elements then you've got tiny bit trashy. Tiny bit trashy means that we there are some trash elements to it, but there could have been more. There could have been milked more. You could have more fun with how trashy and bad the movie could be to be more funny, entertaining. Right in the middle, you got trash. It's the perfect trash level. It is the it's the sweet spot. It's the golden goose. It is the ultimate golden ninja warrior of bad movies. Okay, it's impenetrable. <laughs> Next up afterwards is too trashy. Too trashy means that all the bad elements in the movie are actually starting to get on our nerves a bit. It's a bit, it, it's, we're still having fun, but there are some bits are going, this is slightly annoying. This is not really working for me. This might be slightly offensive. This is, you know what I mean? You're still having fun with it, but it still has moments where you're thinking this is a bit much. And then finally, we have torture. Torture basically means we hated this movie. And we hated it not because we were bored, we hated it because it was too bad. It was not entertaining anymore. We were getting angry at it. We were getting more annoyed at it. There was no way we could really enjoy it. We've had a few movies on this tier, yeah. such as um, such as Street Fighter the movie and Southland Tales, have filled right up on here. Um, but uh, 
I don't, and, but to, just to give you a little tease of what I think, I don't think this movie's going to fall under that. So, <laughs> where would you put this on the trashometer? Uh, for me, it's a very easy decision. <laughs> it's perfect trash. It is. It is it's perfect, perfect trash. We, it's, there's, there's, there's nothing... There's no other way you can say it, because I, I'm not going to... I can't argue any other point. It, it, from my point of view, it's just a perfect balance... Of, and that's another thing. I'll go on about the, the rating system again, just in case people, cause people sometimes it confuse our rating system in terms of like it being like a numbering. It's not a numbering. It's like, it's, think of it like a scales. Yeah. Like you want the perfect balance, don't you? In the, in between. So like, uh, yeah, it, it, it is perfectly in the middle, and it is balanced. It's, it's mm. got everything you want from a bad movie, and it's not. It doesn't like. It hasn't got any boring elements either. I was like, the pacing of it is kind of perfect, really, in terms of like, it's a terrible movie. But you're terrible. entertained throughout. It's so funny, and there's and just there's just everything you want, really. Going to pacing, basically. There's because there's so much action going on. There's a fight scene literally every five minutes. You can never be bored of this movie. That's why the lower tiers don't work for us in this case. Because I was never bored. There was always something going on, and. There's some of it was genuinely good and surprised me. The music surprisingly very good. Some of the actual fights are very good, and you know, are almost top tier. Then you got some weird shit like sex scenes and robots and wigs and the the the, the colourful ninjas and everything else. The Garfield phone. There's enough there to say, like, why is this? And then you kind and it balances itself out. That for if you watch it, if you watch this like I did with about two pints. <laughs> we're like, with, with, with two beers at the ready, just about to sit down and watch it, you're going to have an amazingly good time. And so, yeah, I actually fall in the trash as well. Yeah, I suppose, if it, I mean, if I was going to give it any... We spoke about it as we were going through reviewing it, but the only negative aspect is, like, the fact that you don't know who to root for. But that doesn't, that doesn't ruin your experience. Nah. It still is very entertaining. It is. And, I, and this is a thing as well that I would put a slight caveat for this. We are perfectly fine with watching bad dubs because it's kind of our job in this case. But for people who are not into dubbing or people who just are not into like watching foreign films with bad dubbing on it, this it could test their patience with the Korean side of things in particular because then they go like, what is this, whatever. But other than that, honestly, I think it's perfect. And I think for me, since I love watching bad dubs anyway... Um, it just adds more to the comedy value. So I'd say, yeah, I would, I would, I'm glad we both agree on this. This movie is trash. It's got to be perfect trash. God, I missed that. <laughs> it's been a while since I've the trash <laughs> arbiter. It's been a while. <laughs> Ah, uh, but yeah, this is perfect trash. It is a, this is this is a movie that you if you just want to switch your brain off and have a good time, just watch this. It's great. There are, are there are other ninja movies out there. Some of them better, some of them worse. But this one is right in the middle. It's perfect. So there you go. Wonderful. <sighs> so yeah. Right then, so just before we sort of wrap up, like I said, thank you for joining us on this new season. We're, we're going to do this new season, we're going to try this new format, and we're going to try and not go entirely with deadlines. We're <coughs> going to try and just keep something more consistent going, maybe every three weeks or something of that ilk, just to keep something flowing. And basically, try myself not to feel overworked, because unfortunately, this podcast is a little bit of work. And unfortunately, this is, I do have a full-time job, which is very stressful, and everyone knows about it. <laughs> So it's uh, in need. I want I wanted to streamline it. So I hope you enjoy the new format. I think I think it will work well. I definitely had fun with this format. Mm. I think it's good because we, we just like we're just talking about everything we loved or didn't like, aren't we? In in, in uh, getting straight to it, you know. Yeah, it's and, and hopefully this hopefully means that some of the podcasts could be could be trimmed down a bit because one thing I noticed is I did a recording of an of an episode a while ago, um, which will be a lost episode at some point when I sit down and do it, where I recorded with a few people, a, a, a few of my friends who uh, for D, for a D and D movie. Okay, so we did uh, we did Mazes and Monsters starring Tom Hanks, which is horrendously bad, but. Because we'd followed the original format and the way my buddies like to talk and there's so much to talk about, the recording lasted three hours. <laughs> three 
<laughs> hours. So it got to the point where I think, how the hell am I going to edit this to something coherent and to something be like my goal being about 90 minutes? I like my podcast to be about 90 minutes or less. Some people like them longer. I know, Ed, you, you prefer them longer sometimes because you do that for your commute. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, it is a preference thing. Some people don't mind a big, long, uh, hmm. deep dive into a movie. But it's but other people, uh, like yourself, just wanted to get straight to it and, you know... Yeah, and so cut by the doing waffle. That, cut the waffle and get to the point. So hopefully this will streamline it, which means it may perhaps means there's more episodes in the works and maybe new approaches to things. Maybe we can do a few specials this way because this means the way we do it this way, it means we don't necessarily just have to tackle one movie. We could do a franchise if we wanted to. Because if we yeah, follow totally. this format, we could do a whole. We could say we're, we're going to sit down and do the entire Hellraiser franchise and go. Oh dear. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, Pinhead in Space at some point. He's coming up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Pinhead in Space is definitely one of the books. But, yeah, fantastic. Um, we're not, we're not going to do many teasers. However, there's only one thing I am going to say. Very soon, though, obviously, we're recording this in, like, mid- early November. But soon we're going to be getting into Christmas. And so I wanted to just tease this because we are going to do it because we have to do it. We're doing the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> Fantastic. I knew that I'd come up at some point soon. We had to do the Star Wars Christmas special. We've been talking about that for a while, haven't we? Yeah, and I'm thinking, how can we do this? No, we need to talk about this. It is it is one of the things, honestly, that I haven't seen, but I know a hell of a lot about. So it'll be quite interesting to actually sit through it and see how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I've not seen it either. Is it uh, easy? Is it accessible quite easily? Uh, it should be, yeah. I don't think anyone cares about the rights to the Star Wars Christmas special. I bet you. I'm going to have to check because i got Disney+. Plus. Oh, my God, what if it's on Disney+. Plus? It probably <laughs> like, is, to be honest. It might be on Disney+. Plus. be like Star Wars Christmas special, like 4K edition. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to check. But, yeah, that'll be something to do. But, yeah, wonderful. This has been fun. And hopefully we'll, ha- we'll see you guys in a little bit. So, until next time, keep an eye on your trash. There might be some treasure in there. See you guys later. See you guys.